guys, Nishal here, and uh, I apologise for not making videos uh, very recently. I've been quite busy with university stuff and uh, other mathematical things. But um, today I'm going to be looking at moments from M1, and uh, I'm going to try and give a brief explanation of to how moments work, and hopefully this should help you with any problems. So, the first thing to consider is uh, diagram 1, which is over here. This diagram basically, I'll put this in the middle so you can see. This diagram basically explains the uh, basics of moments. So you have, in, in most moments questions you'll get, there will be some sort of pivot, which you have to consider. Uh, there might be, because there might be more than one pivot per question. If there's more than one, each pivot has a reaction force called R. So if the pivot's called P, usually you just call the reaction force R, P. This does have a force, so you have to consider that in uh, in every question. Uh, so if, cause if an object's in equilibrium, this means two things, that the moments equal, the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments equal. So in this case, because there's this force here and this force here, uh, there is, uh, if you take it moments around a pivot, there's only one moment going counterclockwise because the distance from the pivot and this force is zero, obviously, because this is acting at the pivot. Therefore, this object is in an equilibrium. This system is not in equilibrium. E equilibrium. But another thing to consider is that the all forces in all directions must equal and so obviously in this example, there's RP acting up, MN acting up, and there's no downward force. So this object, this system, sorry, can't be in equilibrium. But to work out the moment, the total moment of this system, you have to look at the, it would be, so if you take moments from P, uh, moments from P, let's move this there, take moments from P, uh, you get if you go if you start with the well if you start with the clockwise movements which is everything this way around as you can see my finger uh, there isn't one because obviously this is not acting clockwise or counterclockwise because it's at the pivot and so basically there's no uh, clockwise so you can write that zero um, and then if you take the counterclockwise movements which are at minus you'll get m which is the force which I've written in newtons times the distance d. And um, obviously, if you were writing it in terms of, because we start with clockwise being positive, which is why I've written zero, your actual moment will be minus m d clockwise. You could just write that as uh, m d uh, anti-clockwise, and that would be your total moment in p in this system. So that's one way of looking at it. Another thing you might have to consider, as I've drawn in diagram two, is that sometimes the force won't actually act directly perpendicular because others in diagram one this is obviously perpendicular to the uh, distance the force is perpendicular to the distance but that doesn't that's not always true and uh, there might be some questions where you need to work out uh, the perpendicular size the the size of the perpendicular force sorry and so this is a good a good example there are two forces one seven newtons uh, one's four newtons they are eight meters away from pivot which we'll call p acting or acting on a lamina uh, sorry, I don't call it pivot, I call it point P. Um, and they're eight, both 8 metres away. One's acting 35 degrees and one's acting... Sorry, one's acting 25 degrees. That's, that's 25. And one's acting 35 degrees, acting this way. So to work out the total moment, uh, the total moment of this system, we can start with the clockwise moments. So I'll try clockwise, because I don't have a lot of space. Clockwise. Uh, the clockwise moment here will be 7 times this distance here, because that's perpendicular to point P, as, a, as you can see by the right angle here, is perpendicular. So, using uh, trigonometry, you can say that's 8 sine 25. So, if you put that in your calculator, which should be on screen, you will get 23.66 newton meters. Bear in mind, this newton meters is important because obviously. You're times the force by distance, newtons times meters, newton meter. That is the unit of moments. And the final, the other, considering anti-clockwise, sorry, anti-clockwise, uh, you're going to get 4, because that's the force, uh, times 8, again, because that's the, that's the same distance, and it's going to be sine... 35 this time because we want to get this uh, this this perpendicular distance here and that's obviously for uh, 
that's sorry, sorry, that's eight sine eight sine thirty five because that's eight and then that's thirty five, and so you want to work out this distance here. So obviously that's just using trigonometry, and that will give you eighteen point three five newton meters anti-clockwise. So the total moment on this on this system is twenty three point six six minus eighteen point three five, giving five point three one newton sorry newton meters but also you have to remember because we took uh, clockwise positive you have to write clockwise it you shouldn't use marks as long as you write which way you're taking it so obviously i've written here definitely it's i'm showing that i've taken it clockwise minus anti-clockwise so therefore my final moment being positive is clockwise so one final thing i think uh that's important to consider in moments is when you have um, rods and a, and a, uni a non-uniform rod. So here's a key example, as you can see from my brilliant diagram. There's two people on a swing, I guess, and um, one person sitting at the edge and one person sitting, and the whole thing is four meters, as you can see, sort of on the right-hand side. I'll go through that in a second. And this, this rod here is not uniform. That means the center of mass, which usually acts, if this is four meters, oh, this whole rod is four meters, the center mass would usually be around here, at this two at two meters away. However, because it's non-uniform, this does this is not true. So, where do, how do we explain this uh, this diagram? So, if you have a pivot here, a, a let's call this man E. He's weighing twenty five kgs. He's sitting at this edge, and uh, some point some point over here is somebody else who weighs thirty five kg, and they and we have to find out where they should sit to make this whole swing in equilibrium. So if you want to try and work this out yourself, you can pause the video, have a look at it. I'm going to go through it anyway. But um, So moving on to this diagram on the right. This is a good thing, in my opinion, to do, by the way. Draw out a simple diagram to explain what, what, what it is that this picture means in terms of numbers. So as you can see, here's part, point A. Uh, that's point A over here. Uh, the, the force acting downwards is 25G, because that's how much... 20, it's the, mass times 9.81 which is commonly known as g and so that's the weight of this person over here 1.8 meters across which is which is what they've told us is another person uh, sorry not another person is the center of mass of the rod um and that also and the rod also is 25 kg and so that's 25 g over here 0.2 uh, meters from here is the pivot which also has this reaction force as i said before and then two meters across we get to the end of the rod of b and somewhere in between x meters from a is this other person who is 35 kg. So how do we work out where this person should sit? Should sit, sorry. Well, the easiest way to do it is to take moments around a. Uh, sorry, not around a. Around m. So take moments around m. Now the reason we take moments around m is because we have two unknowns here, r and x. Now, we want to make, in our equation, we can't really work with two unknowns. So, by taking moments around m, we can ignore the r, the force r, because we don't need it, because it doesn't have an effect on the moment, because it's distance away from, is zero from the pivot. So, we can ignore that, and we can just concentrate on x, which is what we want to find out, how far this person should sit from a to make the system in equilibrium. Now, because we want to make the system in equilibrium, we know that the counterclockwise movements and the clockwise movements should both equal to zero. So I'm going to start with the uh, clockwise movements. So you get 25g times 2, times 2, plus this other 25g, which is the mass of the rod, 25g, and that is 0 0.2 meters away from the pivot two. and now that's the two um, clockwise forces from M so now we have to consider equals 35G which is the mass of this other person as I drew in this diagram over here and that's 35G uh, so not as mass is weight 35 times now we don't know what this distance is from the pivot here uh, the pivot to him but we know that it's going to be X which is this whole distance, minus the 2 meters over here. So minus that will give you this bit. 
this bit over here. So we'll say that's equal to, sorry, my page is moved, equals x minus 2. Now, if you can, uh, from using your calculator, which I should have on screen, you'll be able to see that this is equal to 50g plus 25 times, let's turn my calculator on, 25 times 0 0.2, just 5, 5g equals 30, you can say uh, 35 g x times minus also minus 70 g because minus 2 times 35 obviously minus 70. so I'll just go on to a new page here to finish off so we're going to get 55 g on this side that's the all the that's the sum of the clockwise moments around m uh, I'll just put that there it's equal to uh, minus 70 g plus 35 g x. Now we want to get rid of this 30, this other stuff, this 35 g x g, and just so we can get x on its own. So if I do 55 uh, minus 70, I'm going to get minus 15. So minus 15 is equal to 30. Sorry, minus. Oh, sorry. What did I do? I, I apologize. That shouldn't be minus seventy. That should be plus seventy. If you worked out, then you're more on the board than me. That is a uh, one two five g is equal to thirty five g x. Now we can cancel out the g's. There you go. And divide one two five by thirty five, which gives me three point five seven meters equals x. So therefore, going back to the original question, we can see that the distance that this person must sit from his friend at point A, which we called, which we enabled x, is going to equal 3.57 meters. So if he sits at this point, we know that this swing will be in equilibrium and they'll both be at the same level. So hopefully you got that if you, um, if you worked out yourself, and hopefully this is a brief explanation to how moments work. So thank you very much for watching. If this video helped, please give it a like and share. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.